Welcome everybody. My name is Michael and today we are discussing Paraswap and one of the most controversial airdrops to come from DeFi. So, decentralized finance has brought with it a lot of airdrops and with it Sybil farming. Now back in my days, I feel old, but back in 2017, well, we were focused on something else. Sybil farming is kind of a new concept. Basically, there happened an event. This was Uniswap, where Uniswap rewarded its users, and a lot of similar projects rewarded its users. What that meant is, with Uniswap, for example, they launched their Uni token back in September 2020. They distributed 150 million of those tokens to historical liquidity providers. Uh, those were Sox NFT holders and redeemers, as well as anyone anyone who had interacted with Uniswap prior, prior to September 1st, 2020. Basically, if you ever made a simple swap on Uniswap on the platform before it got you know popular, you got 400 Uni tokens, which is a lot because 400 Uni tokens was around $1,200. Uh, so some people define it as free money. Uniswap defined this as uh, Uniswap owes its success to the thousands of community members that have joined its journey over the past two years. These early community members will naturally serve as responsible stewards of Uniswap. So instead of getting free money, these lucky users were deemed stewards of the protocols, imbuing holders with new responsibilities rather than just $1,200. But everybody looked at it as free money for the most part. I mean, $1,200 bucks is $1,200 bucks regardless. So everyone, and their mothers, and their grandmothers, and their dogs, and everybody, was making wallets after this event, and after other smaller airdrops, because they wanted free money. And some people were misusing this. And that's what's called Sybil Farming. That you would make a wallet, or many wallets, and use the projects just once. Just once, and try and hope that you're going to get some reward. And then you'd go for every single project out there, and do the same thing. And maybe, just maybe, you might strike it rich without actually having to spend that much money. So, they were hoping to become early adopters in many cryptocurrency projects, especially DeFi, where there was massive rewards sometimes. So, basically, everybody wanted to make as much money as they could from Sybil Farming. They were hoping that someone would strike it rich uh, based on just the fact that they would create multiple wallets, they wouldn't care about the projects, they would just use it for a little bit and... You know, hopefully there'll be a nice airdrop. So, recently there was a little bit of a scandal. Uh, there was a researcher from Divergence Ventures, and he Sybil farmed one of the ventures' own portfolio companies. It was called Ribbon Finance. Now, he took 0.1 Ethereum into Ribbon. However, he used a ton of wallets. So, even right now, I'm sure we fell a little bit below the all-time high of Ethereum, but 0.1 would be around 400 bucks. So, it's not a lot of money. And you want to know how much money he made? <laughs> His wallet had made over 652 Ethereum, which uh, was at the time 2,372,210 dollars. Now, if we just go to coin market camp right now and Ethereum is at 4,216 and 72 cents even though it's down 11% over the past 7 days. Let's just type in 4216.72 times 6.42, over $2.7 million. That's quite a bit from, uh, you know, $400, $420 investment. <laughs> so, as you can see, there was a little bit of a reaction to that. So, there was some pushback recently. The Ethereum name service airdrop happened last week. And uh, more than 400 days after the original Uniswap airdrop, newly minted ENS holders... Reminding anyone who would listen that no, this wasn't free money, you were airdrop responsibility. So what that meant was you were hopefully, you were hopefully going to continue along with the project. And uh, the fate of the world's decentralized identity protocol we're talking about, I believe in the UNS, ENS community to use it wisely. And people would continue to use their funds within the community they would try and build on, com on that community. And then you go a little bit further. You have Paraswap's airdrop. And the thing that happened with Paraswap's airdrop was not everybody received tokens. 
And people were asking on Twitter, why not me? Why didn't I receive tokens? I put in so much money. I put in X amount. And uh, one person, Bobby ONG, on Twitter responded, Many people are complaining about not receiving the Paraswap airdrop. Now, I think Paraswap has been smart in not rewarding all wallets that interacted with the contract. Too many people try to Sybil attack future airdrops, and it does not make sense to overly reward these folks. Now, just because you were an active user, it doesn't mean you're going to... Paraswap responded with the following, Why should a random whale who came one day before the snapshot date to swap 1,000 ETH at once, get more tokens than an average user making frequent 1 to 5 ETH swaps on PairSwap for more than two years. So the team redefined what a real community member meant. Instead of simply exchanging fleeting uh, public approval for money, PairSwap identified airdrop hunters. They disqualified them and they established a three-tier system that users would receive rewards based on. Uh, so they did the hard work of deciphering on-chain data. They went through everything, and they determined a user's first swap, how many times the address returned, and the complexity of the swaps. After all this, they determined that around 20,000 community members were real. In doing so, PairSwap only rewarded these 20,000, and even the 20,000 were separated by three tiers. So they actually went and told people, listen, it doesn't matter. You can put a million bajillion dollars into our project, but you're not going to get rewarded unless you stay with our project. And I think other projects are going to follow because uh, this is quite a unique concept. People don't want to be handing out free money to people who will leave. They'll sell and they'll leave the project. There is zero incentive for someone to stay once they receive the money, unless there's more money in the future, but these people don't care. They're looking for their next Sybil farming project. So it's a pretty smart idea what PairSwap did over here. Anyways, that's today's video. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day. The holidays are coming up soon. See you guys as always tomorrow. Bye-bye.